Hey everyone and welcome back to another Warcraft video, one that is, I think, covering just about the most important topic yet. You see, one thing, more than just about anything else, has dominated World of Warcraft as of late, and that is gearing. Blizz sure do want to get a lot of player engagement, and perhaps even some excitement, out of World of Warcraft's gearing, which is natural enough, and this is a quest that has led them on quite a journey indeed. Thunder forging, war forging, titan forging, and now, corruption. And through all of this, a few things have been made very clear to us players. First though, we have to understand what Blizzard actually wants to get out of gearing. And well, what we're going to find today is going to determine much of Warcraft's future. Now, do you want a great non-RNG upgrade? Well, it's easy. Socket today sponsor NordVPN into your internet gear at nordvpn.com forward slash bellular gaming, where you will get 70% off at $3.49 a month, plus your first month free. Now, a VPN, virtual private network, takes all the data that goes out of your computer and it redirects it through a server of your choosing. Of course, Nord have 5,000 plus of them, an industry leading encryption, so you will be anonymous and you will appear as being from whatever location that you choose. This will, of course, let you easily view content from other regions, get around those region locks. Nord are also a Panama registered company. This is quite important. It means that your government cannot get to them to breach your privacy. Your ISP, as an example, they won't know what sites you use so they won't be able to sell your browsing data to advertisers, nor can they prioritize some of the sites that you use over others. Now their app and their browser extension make it all extremely easy to use and fast, and you can get 70% off and a free month at nordvpn.com forward slash gaming. So thank you very much to them for supporting this channel and this content, and with that, let's get going. Overall, what we've seen is that the last thing that Blizzard want is a deterministic gearing system. And that basically means a more old school situation where, you know, a boss just drops some gear or maybe you get some currency with deterministic, meaning that's a fairly fixed path. Basically, you'll have a best in slot set to work towards. Blizzard have consistently talked about how they basically think that that's boring and has issues. They pretty much never want you to look at a boss's loot table and just think to yourself, oh, well, that loot won't be relevant to me you know, be it Titan Forging or Corruption, they have wanted there to be something that could happen to that gear, something that could be exciting, that could make that gear matter to you. And then, of course, it also maybe helps guilds who are struggling to push progression but are re-clearing a lot of content. And also, in some ways, you know, if that guild is getting a little bit of, you know, a Titan Forge here, a Titan Forge there, a Corruption here, or a Corruption there, it kind of balances out to whether they're maybe getting currencies and upgrading their gear, or just getting currencies and purchasing gear off a vendor, if you get what I mean. It's kind of like one big self-sustaining, self-balancing system. So that's what's in the game. What is their stated goal overall? Well, their stated goal is pretty simple, right? It's to make as fun and replayable a game as they possibly can. One where you've always got reasons to log back in and progress your character. And they progressed along the usual MMO routes with, you know, boss drops, quests, reputations, and currencies until patch 5.2 of Mists of Pandaria. Since then, things got more extreme. We had Thunder Forging, then War Forging, and then Limited War Forging became Titan Forging, which was a bit more extreme, and then that gave way to corruption, a system that right now has more impact on your character's power than any RNG-based affix system in the past history of World of Warcraft. Now, these systems aren't really what you usually get in traditional MMOs. They're actually what you find from action RPGs. So in ARPGs, content is typically not in a weekly lockout, and that means it can just be grinded and grinded and grinded, you know, like Diablo. You get torrents of loot, so the idea in those games is you've got layers and layers of skills, builds, affixes, uh, sets, things like that, with the goal being to just, you know, give players near infinite reasons to keep on playing and so many different character builds that they can actually play around with. It really is the opposite of deterministic and, well, it's exactly the direction that Blizzard have taken World of Warcraft in. So, why do this? Well, if you look at their development focus, I actually think it's rather clear. World of Warcraft is more and more designed these days as an instant group action RPG, and less of a shared world MMO. Mythic Plus is designed for near infinite replayability. Raids pretty much are as they've always been, but without best in slot sets, the potential upgrades from them are pretty much near infinite. And the same goes for newer systems like, say, Horrific Visions. Ultimately, right, Blizzard are designing a group action RPG. That's what the content, the core content in terms of playtime is like, and that is what they've designed their loot system around. 
Why? Well, it's rather clear to us. Infinite possibilities, infinite replayability. Now, is this system being designed to provide infinite enjoyment, or is it merely a cynical attempt to squeeze as much as they can out of as little core content as they can? Well, you know what? I'll leave that one up to you. Personally, I think it's somewhere in the middle. I think they know that it stretches the content out a bit more, but I also think they do genuinely think much of it is more fun. So the whole point of that segment that I just did is to explain to you what I think Blizzard actually wants out of the game's gearing system. Now, it's not what I want, and a group action RPG isn't actually the game that I want World of Warcraft to be, but I think from their statements and their actions, their intent is rather clear. I mean, at the end of Warcraft Radio's excellent Q&A session with Ian Hazakostas, game director of World of Warcraft, Ian said that corrupted gear allowed them to explore what gearing looks like in a post-Titan forging world. What's our takeaway from that statement? Well, it's rather simple. They do intend for there to be something resting on top of gear. Some form of system to rest on top of the traditional RPG loot drops. This system will have to mean that, say, reclearing a boss whose gear you already have in your character can still yield an upgrade for your character. That pretty much is the core of it. Blizzard, I do believe, will do anything they can to not have a deterministic gearing system in the game as they have had in the further past of the game. Again, I think Ian's answer makes it rather clear that their direction in a post-Titan forging world pretty much is that of new affix systems such as corruption and not a scaling back of on-gear rolled-on-drop effects. Remember that, if anything, corruption has had more impact than Titan Titan forging ever had in terms of your character's overall performance. So, with Blizzard's goals established here, let's talk about how 8.3 system actually played out. Now, I'm going to be kind, and I'm going to start with a nice bit. You know what? Some of the effects are actually kind of cool. They are OP, yes, but they're actually kind of cool looking. Stuff like Twilight Devastation, the, um, the Shatter One, Void Lash, Infinite Stars, they're cool to have in your character. They're not particularly interactive, yes, they're not really that thrilling to play with, but they give you some cool new spell effects and things popping up from your character. They fulfill a basic fantasy quite well. That said, however, the rest of the abilities suck. They're incredibly boring. They're just stat boosts, very minor effects. And sure, you do always need some junk abilities in there to make the good ones feel better, but for this system, I think it has left most of it just feeling like a bit of a disappointment. Then, on a basic level, there is a part of game design generally that I think the whole thing fails because of its balance, and that is the relationship between a player's skill and their results. Right now, corrupted effects contribute a massive, massive proportion of a player's overall throughput at least for DPS players, and pretty much for free. I mean, yes, better players absolutely will still rise to the top, but you get the point, right? It just doesn't feel good dealing lots of damage when you know it really didn't have that much to do with you, and instead had everything to do with an effects that just happened to roll in your gear. Now, in the context of an action RPG where you're constantly grinding, and it's more of a solo adventure, well, that type of thing can work a lot better, but I would say less so in a game with World of Warcraft's and counter design, class design, overall pacing, and social mechanics. Then, item level is another massive issue for us. Blizzard have repeatedly said that they want a close relationship between gear's item level and its real-world power. Corrupted Gear has failed in this regard more than any other system they have ever tried in the history of World of Warcraft. This is simply not a debatable point. This is a fact. That's just how powerful corruptions are. Blizzard failed to achieve their stated goals plain and simple as they consistently have done for years in this particular area. This does not fill me with confidence that a future system will achieve the goal of item level being a reliable indicator of player power, and that is something Blizzard needs to think rather deeply about. Moving on then, let's talk about scope. Blizzard have succeeded in their goal of making Corrupted Gear a relevant mechanic that players will be engaging in and will care about for this patch. Indeed, it's the only way to play the game, so you kind of have to, and uh, in some ways, Corruption is a bit more exciting than Titan Forging, right? You You've got to balance the downside. Some of the new effects are really powerful, some of them look really cool, and yeah, you do have another layer of tinkering around with your character. This has a downside, though. Now, I'd say that it's meant that gear is actually far more annoying and disappointing than it ever has been. The balance of corruption combined with its importance means that other parts of your character progression and gameplay just matter less. This makes players feel like they have less agency than ever, 
And this is because players actually do have less agency than ever. And I don't really think that's a debatable point, and I think that cleansing is essentially irrelevant to the discussion of agency here, as any time that you actually do cleanse gear, it's pretty much because you're forced to. That's either because a key upgrade cannot be used without incurring some sort of penalty that you can't really deal with, or because the corrupted trait was not desirable. This, of course, has the disappointment loop of of Titan forging, but actually ramped up significantly because of, well, its increased importance in the overall just, you know, scheme of playing the game. Now, that said, I do want to talk about one thing that does have a lot of potential. So, the corruption downsides, they can be a bit more interesting gameplay wise, right? Higher corruption builds plus the cloaks on use ability can make for a fun risk reward situation, especially if you are trying to push up your performance and thinking about, you know, what bosses to apply your gear to. I think there's the core of something good there, but I also I also think, unfortunately, that the overbearing nature of things, in that the entirety of gearing is sort of impacted by it, kind of robs it of what could make it more interesting, and I will talk more about that and the over-systemification later. The bad side effects of this all necessitates the cleansing system, but here's the thing. Cleansing is never good in terms of basic design principles. It is never, as Sid Meier would say, an interesting decision. An effect is rubbish, you don't want it, you cleanse it off your gear. That's boring, it's not interesting. An effect is good, but you can't equip it because of the corruption penalty. What do you do? You either cleanse it now for short-term gain, or you keep it in your bags for future customization. Neither of those are interesting, both of those feel bad. Here is a quote from community manager Lore. It's just a bad feeling. You get an item, and it's a new item from a new raid, and you look at it, and you go, ugh. And to that, game director Ian Hazakostas nodded in agreement. He later then oversaw the implementation of this cleansing system. Very interesting indeed, isn't it? 66 corruption void rituals, anyone? Yes, they did that. As you can see, any player experience that stems from the cleansing system is pretty much a bad one. A far better solution would be to allow players to disable corrupted effects now for a minor cost and then to re-implement their, or you know, to turn them back on again later. That would maybe allow for more action RPG-like build tweaking and that actually appears to be what the development team want you to do anyway. So why not do that instead of the overly punitive and full of, you know, downsides and disappointment cleansing system that they put into the game? You know what? I have no idea why. Cleansing just makes no sense in terms of design fundamentals. Well, okay, it sort of makes sense in that it does, I mean, it does remove the corruption from gear, and that kind of does make corruption more scarce, so, you know, it kind of would incentivize playing the game more and more to get more and more gear later on, and that might actually seem like a little bit of a conspiracy theory, but certainly there are not that many logical reasons for implementing such a system, and the mind does have to wonder. Okay, let's move on from cleansing to something even more fundamental. This all highlights one mistake they've managed to repeat. The Azerite mistake. The Azerite gear system placed much of our character progression on our gear, so much so that it ended up dominating the game, just like how you needed the Heart of Azeroth's levels to unlock further Azerite gear traits, you actually need more corruption resistance in order to wear more of your corrupted gear in realistic scenarios. Of course, you know, if you didn't have the Heart of Azeroth levels, the traits just wouldn't activate. The gear was still wearable. Here though, well, you've got to remove the potentially good trait via the cleansing system, which is, uh, well, let's just say somewhat worse. Now, Corrupted Gear is better in some ways than Azerite Gear, absolutely, but I think you can clearly see how many of the same fundamental issues are actually still present. I would also say that both systems lead to a severe user experience problem, where your bags are just full of different bits of gear. Now, this, especially when all of that gear involves overlapping systems that are, you know, almost impossible to parse logically, means that, uh, yeah, external tools pretty much are needed to actually make sense of people's characters. So, yeah, let's talk about that. You need to sim in order to get the most out of this system, and if you don't think you need to, then you're probably just not playing at a level where that's particularly needed for you, and that's probably good, and you're probably enjoying the game more, but if you are playing at that level and you think you don't need to sim, I mean, I... You basically do. You're, you're, you're wrong. You actually pretty much do need a sim. I mean, there's so many layers of complexity on your character, you need to sim. You can't do that, Matt. Unless you're an absolute whiz with Excel, you just can't. 
Now look, I'll be real. A simple AoE versus single target, or maybe burst versus sustain decision, that's very easy to make when choosing talents and things like that. But with the vast majority of corruption gear effects, especially with, you know, the ever-shifting stat weights of your character, well, that's just not something that people can work out without resorting to external mathematical tools. Ian has talked about how players have just gotten used to simming, and how we'll have to, you know, unprogram ourselves from that behavior. But sadly, Ian, that is not how your team has designed World of Warcraft, as much as you may wish it be that way. If you don't want people to sim, then your team needs to move towards fewer layers of more simple systems for gearing. It really is as simple as that. You cannot have it both ways, and that is evidenced by, unfortunately, your own words. You've repeatedly, in Q&As, outlined your intent for gearing to be more simple, to be more readable, and for item level to be a more reliable indicator of gear power. The team's output has failed on every single one of those metrics. Those failings have been consistent for multiple years running. The team simply has to accept reality and move on in this regard. Now, these problems stem from two primary sources. The first, as I outlined in the beginning of the video, is the desire to push World of Warcraft into a more pure gameplay-driven action RPG direction. The second one is systemization, as is implemented by Blizzard. Blizzard like grand game-encompassing, or as they call them and refer to them at BlizzCon, build-around systems. Azerite was one of those systems. Yes, you can have your regular gear, and then you can have glyphs or you could put them all together into one massive self-balancing system. You could have, you know, off bits of gear and trinkets with interesting effects, as we maybe saw in 8.2 and the Crucible of Storms or past expansions, or you could have that all be one massive game-encompassing system with corrupted gear that happens to self-balance. The problem here is that these massive game-encompassing systems have to average out. They have to self-balance or else they don't work. Every part has got to fit into a massive hole that defines progression, and uh, I mean, it's got to work for everyone. It is, by its very definition, a one-size-fits-all solution for a game that is played in an extremely diverse number of ways by an extremely diverse player base. This stuff, because of its complexity, seems like it is designed for the hyper-gameplay-oriented players, but actually, I think they are the players who are probably the least happy with these systems. I mean, let's just talk about gear with positive effects and negative effects. That was actually a really interesting thing when it was just, you know, an off piece of gear. Extra effects for, you know, just a one-off bit of gear or maybe a set, like in the Crucible of Storms. But with Corruption, they took what was interesting in the past and then they homogenized it into one massive system. They removed its potential to give us unique items and they ended up just making the entire game rely on it. So overall, what I would say is KISS. And no, that's not me coming onto the Warcraft team. That's actually keep it simple stupid. Very old, very classic axiom. That is a good one. Go back to having set bonuses. Go back to having one-off small sets in dungeons and raids. And then, instead of trying to make World of Warcraft one great, big, infinitely replayable Diablo 3 style greater rift kind of thing, just focus on content. The system's design time that is taken up by these absurd gearing systems surely cannot be worth it given the player sentiment. Blizzard, rather than thinking about the benefits from infinitely progressible gear, instead think about the opportunity costs of implementing such a system. The amount of design time that actually goes into making these things happen. Hell, Corruption, corrupted gear has been so unbalanced that it's clear they did not have the design time to actually pull it off well and to make it be good for the game. What other things could your staff be doing in that time? Could we be making just more cool bits of, you know, Crucible of Storms-like gear? Cool trinkets like the punch card, new rewards that maybe aren't tied to player power, new types of content like the Mage Tower, more unique reputations, things like the Warlock class quest, maybe, you know, new reps instead of the homogenized fill the bar ones that we've been used to recently. You know, you guys have thrown all you've got at gearing. You've tried so hard for years and all you've done is make the game worse. Like, is this just a bunch of systems designers trying to justify their own existence by making the most grand, convoluted solutions to very simple problems that they can think up of? 
I mean, I actually do doubt that, and I know that sounds like a really sort of nasty statement, but I will say that from a player's perspective, it often does feel like that. It feels rather arbitrary. So, you know, instead of thinking about infinitely earnable gear and how that could be, maybe instead think about the exciting new experiences your team could craft and deliver to players, stuff that would be freed from the shackles of having to run this same failing experiment every two years. What is World of Warcraft? Is it an instance-based action RPG? If so, keep designing it like you have been. Don't bother making new zones. The art is wonderful, but most of it is not actually relevant to how you're designing the game. Instead, you know what, make a few acts, put loads and loads of dungeons, even more than we have right now, into them, and just run a live service, third-person Diablo WoW kind of game. Pump it full of gear systems, increase the drop rates, and just go wild, an absolute designer's paradise. Go wild. Because right now, it seems like that's the game you actually want to design, but you're just being held back by it being an MMO, and all of the balance concerns that come with that. Alternatively, Embrace it being World of Warcraft. Have simple, understandable gearing. Have class sets to spice up gameplay for every class, every tier. Have cool trinkets that do the same. Add in, you know, those little two or three set pieces for rings, trinkets, and other items. Why not bring back uh, glyphs? Or maybe give people some unlockable class-based talent trees to get the class fantasy going. Maybe do some nice, you know, simple things that just offer a little bit more variety while being less interdependent with each other. And then you know what? Once we've got basic gear that works, just focus on content. Content is king. Repeating the same stuff for a slightly different role, that's not new content. You know, all the design time that is being taken up by these massive expansion designing systems, that could go into new experiences. There's things like player housing, things that would actually allow for more player expression and actualization, challenging solo content like the Mage Towers, nice big quest lines. You guys clearly have got big narrative ambitions. Could we not work to get some more screen time for these characters? Maybe those new quest lines for those new characters could be really challenging and have cool rewards. You know, maybe we could get more things like visions, which are awesome, things like chromie, which were awesome, reputations that don't all feel the same, ones that have maybe got unique progression in their own stories. You know, like the reputations you guys used to put in the game in the past. I'm gonna finish this video simply. World of Warcraft isn't Diablo. And the longer that this is a point of confusion for the design of this game, the more it's just going to have problems. People don't log into World of Warcraft for a super fast-paced, high-octane situation. They log in to spend time in a world that they love. And that's the thing that we've got to think about, not all of these crazy systems that basically do require a convoluted simulation with an additional subscription uh, to actually be able to get the most out of. It's just getting a little bit out of hand. And the reason why in today's video I've decided to be so pointed, so strident, so completely targeted, uh, and, you know, actually talking, you know, in more of a direct way to the team in a way that, you know, maybe will hurt for, for some of them to hear is because I think this is the most important thing out of, like, completely. This is the most important thing for World of Warcraft to pivot away from, to change, to get right in the future. Because if this stuff could just be solved and we could stop going from every expansion being a new scuffle between the players and the devs on gearing, then maybe the developers would be free to actually unleash their creative potential. I know that team can do better than what they're doing now because they have done better in the past. That said, horrific visions are really awesome. So, you know what? All, all those people who did the visions, you're great. You're great. Uh, you're great, and I hope you just get to do more things in the future because, uh, for me, you single-handedly saved this patch, and you're all incredible. Anyway, that is it for me. I would love to know what you think about all of this, so please do let me know down below, and, uh, yeah, I'll see you next time.